Hello everybody, today's video is going to be about the Leica meter MR or um, some versions called the MR4. These are the uh, the, back, the ones that take a battery uh, and you can also get versions that have like a selenium cell, <laughs> selenium cell on the front as well. Um, but I tend to avoid those because the selenium in most of them is worn out. Uh, so it's better if you can to get the battery ones. Um, and so I'll just quickly run through how to use this uh, because I had to read the guide a few times to fully understand it and now I've got used to it, it's really easy, but a video would have helped me. So here's my video guide for you. Okay, so first thing is there's the battery would go in here. So put the battery in, just like that. Put it in facing up. Like that. Oops. There we go, that's M. And when you're sliding that off, you'll find it doesn't want to. That's kind of because this is in the way. If you push that down, then it, um, it's a bit tricky, but push the wheel down, which it'll only let you depress it if it's turned all the way. So that line lines up with that line there. Can you see? Those both line up there and there. Then you can push that in. When you push that in, it gives the cover of the battery chamber enough space to sort of slide past. So anyway, that's in. And there's a little guide there that says it moves, but it doesn't tell you that if that isn't pushed up, it kind of hasn't really got any, it kind of, you can risk buckling this. Anyway, so that was one thing. Batteries that uh, I've used are these ones. They're 1.5 volt, which is slightly higher than one, I think the 1.35 volt original ones, but seems to be working fine. I've metered it and it can, it matches the metering perfectly with my Nikon F3 in sunshine and shadow and uh, everything. Um, what you can do if you want to test it is uh, with the battery out, you push, but it works with the battery in as well, but it says in the manual with the battery out, you push this here like that to the side. And the needle moves. So if I just take a reading first with this, this is how you take a reading. You push that one in. Right. So it's needles over there. If I push this in, then what that's doing is it's telling you is the meter calibrated. If it is calibrated perfectly to the correct voltage for this meter, that line will overlap with that dot. If it doesn't, then it's a slightly higher voltage or a slightly lower voltage. So it tells you basically if you need to replace the battery. Um, or if you've put a battery in that's the wrong voltage. And as you can see, it's actually not directly over the line. So that's because I'm using 1.5 volt battery rather than a slightly lower voltage. But you can calibrate that by turning this little screw here um, and then keep retesting until it lines up over the dot. I haven't done that because uh, as soon as it, when uh, I bought this off eBay, it came with the battery inside. Although the seller had told me that these were the batteries that he'd used, so I'd ordered one anyway, because I didn't know he was going to um, include it, which was very kind of him. But I put it on my Leica, I tested it, as I say, against the Nikon F3 in different lighting settings, and it matched perfectly. So I'm not going to calibrate it. I'm going to ignore the fact that that's not quite over the dot, um, because it's sort of, by doing that, it's sort of adjusting for the fact that the voltage is slightly different. So I'd recommend uh, getting these batteries. Okay. So... That switch is to test it and see the calibration. There's nothing to do with metering really, other than testing. This is for testing, for actually checking if the, for metering. So what you do is push it in like that and the line goes to here. Okay. I've got it on, uh, there's two options basically. There's uh, the red dot and the black dot. So red dot is sort of indoors, low light. You put it on the red dot and you go like that and it's on the black dot and that's your, that's sort of your, out, your outdoors. That's what you'd have it on all the time if you're outdoors and that's what you'd have it on for low light. You know, at night time you'd put it on the red dot. So what you do is I tend to start off with it on the black dot, take a reading. Now the needle's gone all the way up to the top. It's basically gone off the scale. So that's telling me the light in here is too dark. Um, if it had been lower down, then I'd I'd know where it was, and I could 
then turn this until the F on here for the black numbers, these top numbers here, lined up with my line. So, um, so I had my lens set to F4. I'd put F4 where that where the where the needle has gone. So it's there, and then that would tell me that the shutter speed is one sixtieth. Okay. So, but if my if my lens was on F2 like that, I've lined up F2 at the top with the line, then it, then I could shoot at two fiftieth. You see, and I've set my ISO here so you you can basically grip this and you can adjust the ISO here in these little windows to set your film speed. So I'm shooting um, ISO 400 film. Uh, but because the needle's at the top, that means it's kind of gone off the register of what it can read on the black dot. So I put it on the red dot and I try again and it's gone to the middle. So say my lens is on F2, then I turn this. Now I can't use the black numbers because I'm on the red dot. I need to use the red numbers, which are these bottom ones. So I turn this till the red two is lined up there. And that tells me 60th of a second at F2, which is actually, if you think about it, 60th of a second F2 is a normal, that's about what you would use, normal setting you would use for indoors or like window light. So I know that's right. When you take the reading, so you go like this, it takes a reading. When that comes back out, that's now locked there. So I can move light settings and things like that. That needle is not going to move until I hold it in again. You see? So it means you can take a reading and then set it and then kind of forget it. Put set, set your camera up that way, unless the light changes. You don't need to take another reading. If, if the light changes, take another reading. Move whatever, whatever f-stop you've got your lens on. Line that up with where the needle is. And you've got your shutter speed there. Now, when you're turning this, when it's on the Leica, these little, the little sort of uh, metal prong there lines up with the metal prong on the Leica. So it turns the shutter speed for you as you're turning this. So you just need to make sure that you're matching your shutter speeds. Sorry, your, your f-stop, like f2 or whatever, that that is matching what's on the lens and you're fine. Okay, so how do you get this on the camera? So it's, you can't just slot it on. You have to know what you're doing. So, and it says in the, in, the, in the manual how to do this. I thought I'd show you. So you go pull that out. So you've got room to get this on. You have to make sure the camera is on bulb. So there's a little line there. So that's your shutter speeds, right? So put B there, bulb mode. Now on the side, you need to make sure the, uh, that line there is lined up with the B for bulb, okay? And if it is, then that can go up and down. And that's important because you're going to have to push that up in order to slot it on, which is going to be a bit tricky for me to do whilst recording a video, but I shall try. So basically, line that up, the hot shoe, right? Like that. But I can't push it on because that prong's in the way. So I grip and pull that up, or I push it up. There we go. Now I've pushed up the wheel. I can I can sl I can slide it on, and you can actually see there the little prong has gone into the groove on the shutter speed dial. So now when I turn it, it's turning the shutter speed dial. So now it's on, and that's it. And then obviously, if you want to take it off again, you need to make sure. That that little line there is lined up with the B there, which will then mean that the prong and the gap in the uh, shutter speed wheel are lined up. So then you can just basically lift up the wheel again and it will come off. And that's basically it. The only thing you want to be careful of, and like you can see with the previous owner, there's marks on the top plate from one of these, is although this is kind of plastic underneath, it will rub the top plate of your Leica if you don't adjust. So you've got these five screws here. Basically, you can adjust them and it lifts the angle a little bit on the finder. Um, and I checked this one before I put it on and it's raised up enough that it doesn't touch the top plate. 
But if it, it did scrape it a bit, I would use these screws to adjust the height of of this uh, when it's mounted on the camera. Um, so that's that's essentially it. You just need to the things that you need to remember are set the uh, f-stop of the lens, say to f two point eight. Then you need to take a reading, gives you the shutter speed, and then you need to line up that same f-stop with the needle. So if you're on red, you use the red numbers, line the red numbers up, f2.8. If I was on black and I took a reading and it said I need to put it there, then I'd use the f2.8 from the black numbers. Uh, and just remember to set your ISO correctly here. And you kind of hold this down and you can move that disc there to set your film speed. Um, and that's it. Thank you very much. If you're enjoying these, like and subscribe and I shall make more.